Hello and welcome everybody to this week's episode of Ultimate Hoop Sports Nation. I am your host, Mike Harrington. I am the Detroit Regional Coordinator. We're going to start this episode off a little differently than we usually do. Um, usually we highlight a team of the week to give you a little more information about the team, a little more knowledge about the players here in the Detroit region. This week we're going to actually highlight the Shelby Veteran League in its entirety. Uh, the reason why we have chosen to highlight the Vet League is because the Vet League has changed the format in which they play instead of uh, the traditional format of players building their team and then teams signing up to play in the league. We have assigned general managers to franchises and those general managers have built their teams from scratch through a draft. Just to give you a little background information on why the decision was made to go to a draft league for the uh, Shelby Vet the reason being the last five seasons, well, Shelby Vet League has been in play for the past six seasons. Uh, out of those six seasons, we've had three, three teams win championships, uh, one team with one, one team with three, and another team with two. Uh, we were looking for a little more diversity, a little more level playing field, better competition overall, instead of seeing the same two teams in the championship game season after season after season the players decided that it would be better for the league if the talent was spread around and teams were more evenly matched. With that being said, some of the rules had to change for what we did with Ultimate Hoops as far as a league. Uh, this does not mean that we changed the Ultimate Hoops rules. These are just the rules for the Shelby Vet Draft League. Now, I'm not going to go into all the rules that we used to change this into the Draft League. I'll just highlight a few of the major rules. Uh, one being general managers, uh, since they were only picking, they were picking their team from the draft, each general manager was given a franchise player that they could pick before the draft started to get the basis of their team formulated. You know, if you wanted to go big, if you wanted to go to guard, this franchise player was going to help you start to, uh, the foundation of your team. The next rule would be a salary cap was instituted. Um, the salary cap came out basically formulating after the teams were formulated, taking the highest salary team and the lowest salary team, dividing them, add them together, divided by two plus five million, and then we had a salary cap that was agreeable with everyone else. So it was not a number that was too high, but not a number too low to where teams couldn't build a good team through the draft and free agency. The next rule would be free agency and uh, players. Um, as we said in the past, uh, players usually flip-flop, you know, some players stay with their team for a specific amount of time, but then there's also players that flip-flop, hey, I want to play with this team, I want to play with this team. What we did was uh, instituted contracts. So each player was a, uh, had to sign a contract for how many seasons they were going to stay with this team, whether it was one season or a max contract of four seasons. That way, each general manager has some stability when going into the next season, whether it be for free agency or the draft, knowing what they're going to be at for the salary cap, knowing what they have to do to get under the salary cap. Now that the teams have been formulated and we pretty much know who are the rosters, contracts have been signed, uh, the, we're going to talk about the free agency. Uh, free agency period is coming up in a few weeks, and I just wanted to give the, uh, a little more information on what teams look like as far as the salary cap, who's over, who's under, what teams are going to be free agents in the upcoming season, and uh, who's locked in for the long-term contracts. Uh, but before we get to those free agencies and those teams, we're going to shoot over to Studio B for the Ultimate Hoops Detroit Hot Seat. Here we are with Adam Miseraka, the Ultimate Hoops Detroit Hot Seat. Ten questions, 60 seconds. F favorite NBA player? Joe Dumars. Most overrated player in Ultimate Hoops Detroit? You know I'm a referee, this can get me in trouble. Uh, let's see. Since he's not here anymore, McKenzie. Most underrated player in Ultimate Who's Detroit? Underrated? Hmm. Let's see. I'll go with my teammate Ashton. Dirtiest player in Ultimate Who's Detroit? Dirtiest player? Let's see. <laughs> Bill. One team you do not want to play in a championship game. Let's see. Well, 
this point, skills. One team you would love to play in a championship game. Team I played for last time. Favorite ultimate hoops moment. Uh, get my first one a couple games ago. Favorite ultimate hoops player outside of Detroit. Well, I don't know that many. Um, I'll go with Penny Hardaway. Since I Worst teammate to have in Ultimate Hoops Detroit. Oh. I'd have to go with the Black Cole Marcus. Best teammate to have in Ultimate Hoops Detroit. Best teammate. Uh, probably Vaughn. That's been Adam Mizaraka with the Ultimate Hoops Detroit Hot Seat. Welcome back. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. We're going to take a look at the rosters for the Shelby Vet League to see who's over, who's under, and what moves are going to be made in this offseason. We're going to start off with the Bulls This on this report. Uh, the reason why we're starting off with the Bulls is because they have the highest salary cap of the 2012 summer season at $52,556,480, which puts them about $2.6 million over the salary cap for a fall 2012. They are led by Daquan Wilson, who is the GM. Um, they already announced they have two uh, free agents, that they're, two players that they're releasing into free agency next year. Uh, it's going to be Dennis LeCap and Marcus Norwood. That should free up about 13 and some change off of the salary cap. It'll be interesting to see if they go after some of the free agents or look to build their team through the draft. Now as we move forward, we're going to check out the Warriors, who are defending champions from spring 2012. They too are over the salary cap, but not as much uh, as the Bulls. They are sitting at 520500 over. They are will be losing one player to free agency this upcoming season, Jeff Vitale, which will take about $2.7 million off of the books. It has been rumored that Jovan Wilson will be looking to do some trades even though he has signed the remainder of his team for four seasons each. Some of those guys will probably not be with the team next season. Uh, it's just a matter of time before we find out who is on the trading block. Jovan Wilson is adamant about building a dynasty as he was uh, upset about the breakup of his last dynasty which won the last two championships in the Vet League. As we move to the other end of the spectrum, we're looking at the Heat. The Heat, who will be $10.9 million underneath the salary cap for the fall 2012 season, has the most leverage of any of the teams to uh, work with other teams and work with the free agency. Each member of his team is signed to three seasons, so it's not that much of a bulk load if he was to look to move some players. I can't be happy with the current roster that he has and the performance that they've been giving him considering they are 0-3 in this summer 2012 season. I'm sure John Anderson is going to look to some of the bigger free agents, maybe center Marcus Norwood who will be a free agent this season, to sort of beef up his inside presence and give him some rebounding. I talked with John Anderson earlier this, uh, this week and he had been confident that his team will be ready to rebound for the remainder of the season as well as make some major moves in free agency next season. The Sixers on the other hand are in a rough predicament coming into this fall 2012 season. Having got all the pieces they needed in the draft, they are over the salary cap of $852,303 and we will have to get rid of some key pieces in order to make make it underneath the salary cap for next season. Talking with Assistant General Manager Demarcus Reed, he has not been able to come up with a solution as of right now of who to trade and who to get. I'm sure they are more focused on winning this championship for summer 2012 season and we'll look forward to the offseason to see what type of moves they can make to get underneath the salary cap. As we move on to the Thunder, who are led by General Manager Bill Toll, not surprised about Bill Toll's team this season. They are 1-2, even though Bill earlier in the season predicted his team to be one of the top two teams in this league. 
they are going to be under the salary cap of $49 million next season with a $4.8 million to spare. I'm sure Bill Toll is looking at the shooters around the league as he is definitely in need of some perimeter play. He is fully stocked with big men, so that will not be a need that he will have to address in the offseason. But having Anthony Muscat and Madania Bejeta, who are two point guards, I'm sure he'll be looking to get rid of one of them to accommodate the shooting that he is desperately needing on the perimeter. We'll see in the offseason which way Bill decides to go. We're going to round out this report with the Lakers. The Lakers are 1-2 and two in this current season and have pretty much for the history of the franchise been a 500 or subpar 500 team. They will be $6 million underneath the salary cap next season and will definitely look to make some major moves in the draft as they did lose one of their big men as well as shooters in the uh, offseason of spring 2012. I talked with uh, General Manager Todd Lewick, and he is on point with the focus that he needs to have in the free agency to secure that his team can become one of the elite teams in the Veteran League for fall 2012. Only time will tell to see if he makes some moves with some draft picks or if he is comfortable with the roster that he has. Now, as we look at the list for the fall 2012 free agents with Sean Swanson, Jeff Vitale, Marcus Norwood, and Dennis LeCat, probably the most valuable on this list will be Sean Swanson. Even though he doesn't do a lot of point scoring on the offensive end, he does bring in a tangible that you need for uh, mismatches at 6'5", able to shoot inside and outside all the way to the three-point line. All right, I'm here with John Anderson for the Ultimate Hoops Detroit Hot Seat. Uh, 10 seconds, six, 10 questions, 60 seconds. Starting now. Starting now. Favorite NBA player? Oscar Robertson. Most overrated player in UH Detroit? Uh, Michael Harrington. Most underrated player in UH Detroit? Uh, Tony Harden. Dirtiest player in UH Detroit? That's a toss, uh, Rob. One team you do not want to play in a championship game? New Jacks. One team you would love to play in the championship game? Anybody. Favorite UH moment? Oh, man. Favorite U.S. moment is when we did a three-man weave, me, you, and McKenzie, and Chuck ended up with a dunk. Favorite UH player outside of Detroit? My man that tore us up in the Vegas tournament. I forgot his name. I wanted to play for Minnesota. Paris Cows. Paris Cows. Worst teammate to have? Worst teammate to have is anybody that's unselfish. That's selfish. Worst teammate in UH Detroit? <laughs> Worst teammate in UH Detroit is... Uh, can't think of nobody. Best teammate to have in UH Detroit? Best teammate to have? Michael Ayrton. Back to worst teammate in UH Detroit. <laughs> worst teammate to have? Um, I don't know. All my teammates have been good. There you have it. John Anderson with the UH Detroit hot seat. All right. Thank you for joining us this week on Ultimate Hoop Sports Nation. We'll see you next week uh, where we'll get an in-depth look at the 2012 Ultimate Hoops Dream Team. Again, thank you for joining us and have a good day.